internet. Hello internet, hello people. <laughs> I'm here with Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore and we are having a bit of a sewing day today. We are going to be playing with crumbs and strings. I'm looking forward to getting a lot of crumbs done but I have a funny feeling it's going to take forever. <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing with some crumbs today. I have a basket full of crumbs. <laughs> and I'm not like Brenda, I don't organize my crumbs. Mine are just all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I, I try, well, I had to pull out my string and crumb basket. What I do is I get lazy while I'm sewing. So I throw everything into one box. And then when I had to do something else, I pulled out all of the strings and all the crumbs and I sorted all my strings by color and I sorted all the crumbs by size and shape and this, but my crumbs are like this size. <laughs> oh, some of mine are too. Yeah. So it's, it's, I guess it's a difference of like some of the stuff that you're showing me that would actually go into my scrap box. Yeah. But I, I, I did sort of about probably about four inches would be about my that goes into my scrap box rather than my crumb box anything smaller than that goes in my crumb box down to probably three quarters of an inch is my smallest crumb and after that it's like well it's not even going to show up by the time you lose two quarter inches well my plan for today is I have a whole box here of just crumb blocks I've been putting together I basically use my crumbs as leaders and enders and I just start sewing and I just make massive blocks of whatever. Of yeah, oh, right. very cool. And I've had them in this box and I need to do something with them. So I found from an earlier project, I've got most of a, um, what do you call layer cake of, okay. of rainbow fabrics. Right. Our quilt guild is for the charity this year, we're making quilts for the rainbow youth group, Qtopia. So okay. I, I could use some of these rainbow blocks and alternate them with 10 inch squares of scrappy. And that would be a really quick way to put together an interesting quilt top. So I think I'm gonna trim all of these blocks down to 10 inch and then swap them with these ones and see what happens. Yeah. So the, the other thing I saw, well, I can't remember her, her name, she's on YouTube, and what she did was string and crumb blocks, or, or you know, like she just put mm -hmm. all these crazy string and crumb blocks together, and then she cut them into a half square triangle, Ooh. like they were all 10 inch squares, and then yeah. she cut them into a half square triangle, and then cut the, the layer cake into a half mm -hmm. square triangle, and they, they were either tone on tones, or solids but they look all look like solids and that was really a cool looking quilt when she was done i was like yeah wow. yeah because you know it's like you know, strings overwhelm people and they just they look messy and it's like well no you can play around with them quite mm. a bit you know so i might do both those things i'm sure i've got enough blocks here to do both so <laughs> <laughs> what i'm going to start with i'm going to start just trimming blocks that's my first step for today Brenda, tell me about the type of quilts that you like to make. Well, I'm a real scrappy, scrappy uh, quilter, right? I mean, I'm usually, I hit my crumb box, or my scrap boxes first, usually, um, unless I'm running out of a color. I prefer doing a, I'm now, like the quilt here behind me is all the colors. And it's, it's bright and happy and cheerful and all the rest of the stuff. But I'm finding that I'm more successful if I stick to a color palette that narrows the field, right? Yeah. So some of my best quilts, I believe, are the quilts that are, you know, let's say they, they only have cool tones or only warm tones or, you know, they're, you know, blue and brown, you know, limiting your, your, your palette. Because a lot of people love the whole homey, scrappy look, but at the same time, they prefer a smaller palette. But I like, the other thing I do like doing is I like small piecing too, right? 
I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd do a Dear Jane quilt again. I, I don't know if I'd ever do a G Dear Jane. But I did the anthology quilt. I don't know if you... Uh, there was a lady out of Boise, Idaho. Just out of Boise. And she ran this uh, anthology uh, sew along. I went and I got the book and I finished all the blocks. I haven't sewn the blocks together yet. But I was like... Okay, but it was a lot of work. Uh, definitely a lot of work. But the blocks are very, very tiny. Beautiful blocks, but... Yeah, I don't like following patterns. I like to just make things up as I go along. So I get, I think, bored with that kind of so much pattern to follow. This is the book. All right. That I, that I was uh, working out of. Wow. There's 100, 182 different blocks, and I decide, okay, I'm a better piecer, like to do them in bulk. Yeah. So I, d I decided I was going to make two blocks of air each block in here, just to go through all the Civil War fabric that for some reason I had in my stash. Some of the blocks in here are just beautiful, beautiful blocks. But where's the one everybody cringed on when they got to it? They Okay, it's this one. Baby bows. Oh, wow. Yeah. There is 70 pieces of fabric, and that block, unfinished, is uh, four and a half by five and a half. That would be challenging. <laughs> I was holding stuff with tweezers. <laughs> I didn't go out it done. I was just like... I didn't believe how much how much little stuff I had to had to piece, but it was fun. That, that would definitely not be my style. <laughs> I did the um, sugary do quilt along. Oh yes. Before, and that was one where I learned so much, and that was perfect for me because it was like it wasn't really a pattern. It was she gave us like a technique. And then it's like you did a row using that technique and you could adapt it how you liked. And, yeah. And that I love that because that was so much in my wheelhouse of just, I can take this idea and run with it and, and adjust it how I like. And I made it oh, totally yeah. crappy and it was fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've seen those quilts. Those quilts are beautiful. She did a really good job. Yeah, so um, I finished quilting mine just recently. It took me a year to quilt it because I got very fancy with the quilting. Oh, yeah. So by the time this video goes up, I will have had the video up of my quilting that. So. Well, I'm going to have to watch for that one. Yeah. Because, you know, you always push yourself to do something a little different, right? I do, anyways. I, I think if I had to make the same quilt over and over and over again, I'd be beating my head against my sewing machine. Oh, yeah. Um, I uh, made a house quilt. When the pandemic was first on, our first call, and I came up with this crazy, uh, crazy house block that was 10 and a half inches square, and I put a bunch of string trees, like string, string piece trees, you know, like odd. Yeah you know, spruce trees and whatnot, <laughs> put all that in. And then I started appliquing all the animals that came out of the bush that we were seeing, like, you know. But the other thing that we found here, I don't know, probably, probably in Australia or New Zealand and all those other countries as well, is Jennifer, the, the domestic violence went through the roof. Yes, yeah, we the have... people just were not prepared to be home with their spouse 24 7. And so, in my quilting, then I started telling a different story. So, the quilt looks very bright, happy, and nuts, and then there's a lot of dark undertones, right? So, oh, yeah, I did all of that quilting on uh, my <laughs> actually, my black one of my 301As, and you know, Lester's like, why are all the teardrops on the blue doors? Because we have a blue door mm. right on our house. And we always tell people, oh, come look for the bright blue door, bright cobalt blue door. And um, so the doors on these houses are all blue and they're all uh, teardrops inside the doors, you know. 
Because you don't know really what's going on yeah. in other people's lives. You really don't. I love that about quilting, the way that you can actually use it as a political art form, that, that you can say important messages through what's such a domestic art form. And you, you, can, you can really make it say important statements. There's, um, in our Quilt Guild show last year, there was a woman exhibited in that and she had done this series of amazing quilts around the theme of domestic violence. Yeah. And what she'd done, it was really effective. She had these, these beautiful applique quilts and on them she'd applique words that were the kind of excuses that people, abusers make, like, oh, she was asking for it or she shouldn't have dressed like that or yeah. those sorts of things. And it was so confronting seeing that contrast between the beautiful, beautiful quilt and these horrible, horrible words on them. And it was just everyone who saw it just it was said it was so effective. I feel like I'm running a fool's errand on this. Sorry? <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a fool's errand. I'm gonna be doing this for days and days. I'm just getting distracted looking at these blocks as I'm pulling them out because it's like a history of my quilting. It's like, oh, I remember what quilt I was making when this, I made this block. And, <laughs> and your fabric bin is an archaeology dig. Of, yes. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> my mother has taken up um, uh, English paper piecing and she's never been a quilter and she's been like looking at my quilts and thought she wanted to have a go but she didn't want to do it on a sewing machine so she's doing English paper piecing and she's doing a lap quilt out of tiny tiny hexes and it is taking her forever but she's really enjoying it and it's like watching her process I'm like maybe I could try that but then I realize how many other things I've got in progress and I don't need another project <laughs> It's funny how we, I don't need another project. I don't need to be doing that. I know. I don't want to be doing that. That's too much. Yeah. I, um, I made a, a bunch of, uh, larger hex beads and I put them in, uh, kind of a, oh, I think I can show it to you. Hang on here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So instead of putting it like a traditional, you know, hexy garden, grandmother's garden, I decided to do that instead and it swoops across it looks like it's swooping across the midnight sky that's amazing it's really good i, I love that design and so did you like applique them onto the background or did you pin the background i pinned very very i laid it all out on my design floor i got i got it all pinned and i over pinned and then i you know uh top stitched around yeah, my, my mother is threatening to send me her quilt when it's ready to be quilted and and i can do the quilting on it which like that's fun but it's really stressful to quilt someone else's quilt <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes what is your bad job <laughs> yes it is like do we need that kind of stress in our life Right, I have lots of 10 inch squares now. I need to decide what to do with them. Okay, so that's four by six. Uh, yeah, so, and I'm gonna use the rainbow ones with it. So I will effectively double that. So what's a good size for a quilt? I, this is where I, I work in the metric system for everything except quilting. And so <laughs> it's know. like, I, I, can do inches at the scale of cutting things and stuff but I always struggle to think like when I'm thinking of a whole quilt size what does like you know 40 inches look like <laughs> so, so for a I'm, I'm doing this as a you know probably a lap quilt type or a, a cuddle quilt rather than a whole bed quilt so what can I, can I make a, just one just one little suggestion yep. choose odd numbers Yes. Like, go oh, yeah. five by seven or yeah. five, you know, like, like three by, because the brain thinks mm -hmm. odd numbers are beautiful, yes. or even numbers are not. And especially if I'm checkerboarding with the, the rainbow and the, 
the scraping yes. off. Yes. I so you would want, like, if you're going to do sashing, where you actually now leave the crumb, because there's lots of seams in those crumb blocks, right? So yeah. sashing le leaves a place for all of them to lie in your quilt top. Although if I'm just Oops. using a solid block with each one, I mean, it's like a very, very wide sashing, effectively. So yes. Yeah. So, so I think I'll do it without sashing. I'll just do like... kind of thing okay so you're gonna oh you're gonna checkerboard them yeah okay so then but then you're still gonna have what like how does that now how do the numbers work out do you get an you don't get an odd number right well if I, 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 I don't need to use all of them because I might still use some of them for something else so yeah um, so if I did it five by seven that would yeah that would work out as that's odd numbers yeah. and, then, and so and I could put the the rainbow on the outside, so it would be like, uh, yeah, four rainbow across, and three um, scrappy blocks in between them. Yeah, because you could uh, like you're almost getting twin size quilt now size, right? Yeah. If, so I don't want to do that many. So. So five by seven, if they're ten and a half inch squares, that's nine and a half. Uh, so they're ten inch squares, that's nine and a half effectively. So it's nine and a half by seven is what about sixty? Hang on, let me check the calculator. Hang <laughs> on. Okay. Nine point five times what? Seven? Seven. Is sixty six point five. Okay, so that's a good size, isn't it? That's yeah, that's actually a good size. But I, yeah, I think that that'll work. Right, five by seven. Right, I'm going to do some layout and and play with that. Yeah, because that looks really cool. Yeah. Like on the wall now. Look how this goes. I don't know why. Why I don't know why our brain thinks beautiful odd stuff is beautiful, but it makes sense with quilting because if you're going to have alternating things, then you end up with such being more symmetrical if it's yeah cool. so were you laying out your 10 inch squares in a rainbow color too or no um yeah i think i will i was just looking at i'm not sure how it will work out with the numbers but we'll just see what happens yeah that would be cool too well it's official i'm probably more than halfway through my flying goose I'm going to switch on to something else because I'm running out of little pieces to put. Like I have enough to do another row or two, but I'm kind of like, but I'm getting bored. <laughs> I want to do something else. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, my, uh, I'm going to make some baskets now. Uh, my One of my friends explained this how to do this. When I am ever piecing like this, I have to have something behind it, like paper or, yeah. you know, something, something, something has to be behind it. So I was told, put it directly on batting scraps. Yeah. And then you have a liner to do these baskets. I was trying to be clever and do some sort of sequence here, but I don't think I've got it quite right. It doesn't look good. So then put a yellow, like in that first row. Yeah. That for, like where you got the red up on the upper left hand side why don't you put the yellow one there and then the next one go oranges and then reds purples uh, blues greens oh actually yeah just do down the yeah yes or go on an angle go on an angle because rainbows appear in an on an angle right no i'm i've i've got seven rows so or seven columns so i can and the seven colors yeah okay well that works too right i'm gonna make this work <laughs> i'm over complicating things i know don't overthink it just have fun i know i think this is gonna work but i told you i can't talk and think at the same time <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> This is why I do voiceover later for most of my videos is because 
when I get into the creative stuff, I stop, I forget that I'm supposed to be talking to someone and I just like concentrate on, I want this to look good. <laughs> I know. I, I know. love that. Yeah. That's beautiful, actually. That's really gorgeous. Yeah, I think that's going to work really well. And now you have an uneven number. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start sewing that together. Okay, I've now got the lining sewn and the basket sewn. <laughs> okay, so now I stuff this in here and... Well, I'm just doing the overthinking now of like looking at the scrappy blocks and not wanting to get the ones that have the same fabrics into them and next to each other. <laughs> People overthink all the time. They overthink stuff too many times. It's just, yes. It steals your joy when you're overthinking. Right, I'm going to start sewing and then I can't think anymore. <laughs> yeah, start sewing and then it's too late. You can't, you can't fix anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's not start in the middle. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, this is why I like having my design wall right next to me here. Is like I don't have to go very far, so I don't forget what I'm working on. Yeah, I wish I had room in here. Like I'm, I'm only in a ten by twelve room here, and I envy people who've got a design wall. I mean, uh, one could be set up, but yeah. Well, I mean, this is a tiny room. Um, I don't know what the measurements are, but it's. Well, you've seen me moving around it, and it's like the computer is on one wall, and here's the other wall here. So, yeah. and yeah, I just have everything. I move furniture around to get at things. So you've seen that I'm, I'm moving the ironing board out the way to get at the design wall, and then I move back again. And that's why I built this ironing board on wheels, so that I can really easily slide things around and, and just work. I configure the room as to what I'm doing at any time. This is definitely not going to be a show quilt because some of these, the way I've trimmed these blocks, I've ended up with like chunky seams right on the edges of them. <laughs> oh. But it's going to oh. look nice and colourful and it's going to make some young person very happy. Very colourful, very creative, using your crumbs yep. and your strings. And I'm just thinking that, you know, these quilts are going to young LGBT people who have been kicked out of their homes because their parents don't agree with it or would it, things like that. So going to people who really want some comfort and to know someone's loving them. And that's yeah. what we're doing my, for making cherry quilts. Yeah. Yeah, my cherry, uh, my cherry quilts, we go to uh, Luana House here in Edmonton. It's a battered women's shelter. Oh, yeah. Okay, basket one is done. Well done. That was fast. Well, all the string piecing was done already, right? So it's yeah. a little... It's this crazy little basket that my daughter hopefully will love. You know, I love going through, working through scraps and strings and stuff like that. It's like the archaeology of all the quilts I've made in the last, you know, several years. And every once in a while, I come across a piece that, where did I get this? Yeah. <laughs> where did, what happened, wh whose quilt did that belong to? So what kind of machine do you sew on? It is a Banana Record Electronic 830 mm -hmm. from 1980-something. It was actually my grandmother's machine. And I remember her buying it, and it was like top of the range, really... The, the best machine you could get at the time. Yeah. And Renina's are well known to be very high end machines. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it still runs fantastically well. It, you know, it doesn't have a lot of fancy stitches. It's got supposedly 20 stitches, according to this, is sort of a manual lever that you move to get the different stitches. But I like use zigzag and straight stitch, and that's pretty much it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's great. It, it can drop the uh, press effect so you can do the um, do free motion quilting on it. It's it's a lovely machine. I, I love it so much. And yeah, it, my mother had it up my, when my grandmother died. 
my mother took it, but it doesn't really sew that much. And so yeah. we started quilting. She said, do you want your granny's machine? And I was like, yes, so much. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I had, uh, I asked mom if I could have her, her sewing machine. I already had her black one, her first one, but I asked her if she could, you know, if uh, if I could have her sewing machine uh, when she passed, because she had gotten a a really nice one. Well, there was uh, there was a, I had it here and everything, and I gave it to my niece Holly, because I just thought, you know, that was where it needed. That's to go. the the power of YouTube is we can edit out all our mistakes and nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? If you edit out all your mistakes, you're not teaching them right. how to fix it, right? That's part of that. I find that everybody makes mistakes, right? But if you don't teach people how to fix them, they're afraid. Yeah, right? they're afraid to sew because then they don't know how to fix it. Exactly. I so I am never. I don't worry about, you know. I don't worry about putting mistakes in. I leave them in, and then I sh explain to them how to fix it. I don't go out of my way to make yeah. mistakes, mind you, but... But they happen naturally. <laughs> they will happen naturally. If they're on film, oh well. You know? Yeah, I... With my um, YouTube, I don't do a lot of, like, introductory level tutorial stuff, because I think... There's a lot of people out there who have already done really good introductions to how to do a lot of techniques. So I tend to concentrate more on the, the design process and what my thought process yeah. is and how I design things. And, and certainly in that, I'll quite often like put something up on the wall and then go, oh no, that's not what I want and rearrange it. And I'll talk about why I'm doing that. So yeah. yeah. And it's it's quite a simple process. It's, I, yeah, I know you can do that quite easy. It's so so many people are terrified of not using a pattern because they'd have to do the, the basic maths of thinking, if I want a four patch that ends up as a 10 and a half inch square, what size do I make the four patch? Well, and that's that's the other thing too, right? Like it's, uh, it's freeing. People forget how freeing it is when you don't have to... Your yellow stripe must go here, and the yeah. red one's got you. Know, you don't have that. You just, you know, you sit and you make it happen, right? Like the when I was doing that potato chip block, when I first started doing that block, I could put the weirdest fabrics together in that block, and it looked good. Sometimes you have to do stuff to tie unity in a quilt yes. block. Yeah, these blocks are just literally. Whatever came into my hand when I reached behind me, grabbed into the scrap bag, that's what I sewed together. So some of them, there is like the same fabric next to each other because that's just what it happened. Sometimes they're completely mismatching, but it doesn't matter because yeah. I've given it the unity of those big solid blocks next to it, which yeah. breaks it up and takes your eye away from the confusion. And yeah. But there we are. There's ours. One of the things we forgot to do today, remember how we talked about we were going to become accountable for our UFOs? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I know. The dreaded UFO count. Well, I've just added to my UFO count by starting a new project. So. <laughs> I know, I did too. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah, I have a few here that I'm just... Uh, do you really want to count them out? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. So I I will be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. My UFOs are about six inches lower than my hip. Mine are all in nice boxes mostly. So they're, they're not measurable in that way. <laughs> hey, I have five that are in boxes. Um, this one is now six. I've got another one that's not in a box. It's just sitting on top of the pile of boxes waiting to be sewn together. So there'll be seven. I think, oh, and I've got some through that I'm doing the binding on at the moment. So there's probably another three in there that I'm uh, sitting waiting to put binding on. So 
Ten. So you have, okay, you have ten UFOs. I probably have thirty. Okay. So are we going to make a challenge who gets through them first or no? <laughs> yeah, so I think you'll win because <laughs> realistically, I I always have these great plans and then I realize that I'd probably make two decent sized quilts in a year. That's all I can manage. Shall we meet again at the end of the year and see how many quilts we've actually made? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how many ufos we have yeah i know yes, yeah if the if the ufo count is long bigger at the end of the year we've done it wrong <laughs> i had a blast today i just had, i thought this was such a fun day and i actually got something done yeah <laughs> I've, I've got a long way towards being a, a finished quilt top it's like another hour and i'd have this done this is great <laughs> Three, three UFOs off my plate, and they're leaving the house on Sunday. Yay. Well done. <laughs> yeah. That is a very successful day. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I love your quilt. I think it just rocks. Yeah. I, and I love how you place the the rainbow colors now. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited by it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it in the monitor here now, and it's like, wow, that looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and some of the blocks aren't even up there anymore, but it yeah. still has that striking, oh. yeah, it's it's interesting, it's an interesting piece. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how we all think about things differently, it really mm. is, I just, I, I've enjoyed this time very much with you, yeah. and uh, yeah, the end of the year, hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the year, I might have finished this one, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, we yes. should say goodbye, my dear. Yep. It's been so much fun. I've had just a blast today. Yes. Hey, you take care. All right. So, bye. Well, normally I say kake te ano, but for this one I'll say mate wa, which means I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay. Bye. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed my morning sewing with Brenda. Hopefully we'll get to do it again at the end of the year and then we can catch up on our respective works in progress piles and see if we've made any progress on them. <laughs> I carried on sewing for another hour or so after we finished the call and I managed to finish the quilt top. Yay! <laughs> so now my challenge is to try and quilt it quickly and with a nice loose quilting pattern so that it doesn't get all stiff and horrible because I want this to be a cuddle up on the couch in front of the TV type of quilt. And then I'll better donate it to Qtopia for some rainbow kid who really needs a cuddle. And hopefully this quilt will provide that to them and a bit of brightness in their life. Thank you so much, Brenda, for being part of this sewing day. I had a lot of fun with you. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I will see you next time. Kakite anō internet. Mm -hmm.